Hi there, it's Jeff Epps, and this is my good buddy Timex. He's a watchdog. Get it? Timex, watchdog. Timex is the name of a watch, and he's a dog. Alrighty then. Well, today I wanted to talk with you about internet safety and how we approach it in Richmond County Schools and how we go about filtering. So let's take a look. To begin, the Children's Internet Protection Act, or CIPA, was enacted by Congress in 2000 to address concerns about children's access to obscene or harmful content over the internet. CIPA imposes certain requirements on schools or libraries that receive discounts for internet access or internal connections through the E-Rate program, a program that makes certain communication services and products more affordable for eligible schools and libraries. E-Rate is the program that allows the district to purchase Wi-Fi access throughout the school. Schools subject to CIPA have two additional certification requirements. One, their internet safety policies must include monitoring the online activities of minors and two, as required by the Protecting Children in the 21st Century Act, they must provide for educating minors about appropriate online behavior including interacting with other individuals on social media websites and in chat rooms and cyberbullying awareness and response. So as you can see this is a federal requirement. We must monitor and protect our students from harmful content. Now let's continue with the monitoring. How do we monitor internet access in Richmond County? Well we use a product called Zscaler and as you can see it gives us a very good insight into what's going on on the network. We have graphs that show us how the internet access is being utilized throughout the district. We know what social networking websites are attempting to be accessed. We know what streaming media websites are attempting to be accessed. We know what threats are trying to get inside of the network. And over here we can look at our top users. And when we look at our top users we're able to see who's accessing the internet and specifically what they're doing. So for example I'm going to right click on this user and click view logs. Now once the log comes up it allows us to look at what this particular user has been trying to access. We know if the site was allowed. We know what category it fits into. We also know if there was a threat, maybe a malicious site, and how much bandwidth the actual site consumed. And we can do this for every user that accesses the internet. Now let's take a look at the three ways that we filter sites. We filter sites via keywords, via categories, and via block sites by blocking the actual uh, website itself. So let's start by looking at the URL categories. And as you can see, there are many categories for us to choose from such as business and economy, education, information technology, adult material, gambling, illegal or questionable, and so on. So we can go in and actually block these categories so that any websites that fit into these categories will be blocked. We also have the ability to block based on keywords. So when we block based on keywords, we can block a website based on a word or words. 
So if we want to block all websites that have the word or contain the word chat, we can block them using this category. And finally, we can block based on websites. And we've created a category called blacklisted sites. And this particular category allows us to enter the names of specific websites. And when we enter the names of those websites, they are blocked automatically. In Richmond County, we are also able to block based on user groups. This means we are able to separate access to internet websites. For example, we can give students access to certain websites. We can also give teachers and staff access to different websites. This allows us to be SIPA compliant and filter our students, but give our teachers access to the materials that they need to create dynamic lessons in the classroom. Now, please don't think that uh, we filter only in your home. We filter in my home as well. You see, Timex had a little incident. Um, he was going to puppylove.com and um, he kind of got in some trouble in the chat rooms and we had to block it here, but we're past that now, right? Okay, very good. All right, well, that's all I have for you. Thank you for listening today and happy surfing.